everybody. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us again on another Modern Work Pulse. Anybody that's new, my name is Dan. I'm the Training and Adoption Practice Manager for ICOM and across the wider cloud collective. So making sure that uh, everyone understands why they're using these amazing modern work tools and getting the most out of that. Moving right along today, our agenda, uh, George is going to talk about getting in the loop and take us through what is Microsoft Loop and give us a crash course on what it is, why it's important and why you should be excited. I'll take you through the typical feature roundup and we'll talk about any recent updates and any coming soon. This month's a pretty Teams heavy uh, update, but there are a couple of really exciting ones thrown in there. And then our special guest, we've got the guest of honor, we've got Sneha from Microsoft joining us to talk about employee experience and how Microsoft is changing the world one app at a time with the employee experience side of things. And then we've got the typical question time at the end. Uh, so open conversation, open Q&A. Awesome, thank you everyone. Uh, so yeah, this is me. I did throw together these. I have two cats and I love them both equally, despite one of them being very clever and one of them being very orange and behaving as such. Um, I like to think of myself as the resident Microsoft Teams clippy, as I'm always turning around and saying, oh, it looks like you're uh, starting a meeting. Do you need help with that? Looks like you're on mute again. So <laughs> that's a little bit about me. If you haven't met me before, hopefully that's a nice little introduction. But today I'm here to help you get in the loop. So Microsoft Loop, what on earth is it? Well, let's talk about it. Uh, so Microsoft Loop is a collaborative platform that allows you to work together in a whole new way. So it's made up of three separate parts. You have workspaces, you have pages, and you have components. And I'm gonna drill into what these are and a little bit about what you can do with it. So starting with workspaces. So these are the home of Loop. You can create one for your team, you can create one for your project. Anyone that is already using OneNote for that kind of collaboration, you might like to think of a workspace, workspace as being a little bit like a notebook in OneNote. Now we can create, oh, that did something cool. <laughs> you can create one for your team or a project, like I said, but you can share access to it and you can see who's able to access it by the little pictures that appear next to each icon and you can collaborate in real time across the workspace. So whenever you do create a new one, you're gonna be able to type in some keywords and Loop's actually gonna pull documents relating to the keywords you've typed in and the name of the document so that you will be able to grab files and other relevant documents from across your OneDrive and SharePoint network and pull that all into your workspace. So you have it all at your fingertips there. So it'll suggest things, you know, like stream videos with the same title, you know, meeting recording, things like that, any Word documents, any PowerPoint documents or other loop components relating to this. So if I click on an existing one, like the fourth coffee project right here, I can open that up. So once you've opened up your pages, this is where, oh, sorry, opened up your workspace. This is where you come and you get introduced to your pages. Pages are where the work happens in loop. So you can simply create a page and you can type in there, but you can also add all kinds of content by typing a slash. It'll prompt you to do this, don't worry. And when you type that slash, you'll get a list of different things that you can add. You can give its page its own look and feel with an emoji picker. So it prompts you to pick a little emoji that represents it like a home or a brain or a pencil, whatever you wanna use. And you can also add a cover image for each one so that you can visually distinct, have that distinction between them. Now, your pages are highly flexible. You can actually grab little handles and click and drag your content wherever you like, move it around the page nice and easily. Or you can turn the entire page into a shareable component. So if you just wanna share one page, maybe it's notes or something that you've taken with someone, you can turn it into a loop component and share it on like that. But it's so much more flexible when you start to use components individually. So components are, made out of the content you put into your pages. And then you can add it into multiple different pages. So let's say I needed this task tracker in my project home. Maybe I wanted to drop it into, you know, project notes or something like that, into a brief and so on. They've given us access to quick on the fly collaboration space. They could be a checklist, a table, they could be a table that contains a checklist. 
Um, and if we use this checklist as an example, I can even drop that into a Teams chat conversation. I can drop it into an email in Outlook. I can use it all over the place, even within Microsoft Word or on a whiteboard. The great thing about this is that all of your changes are reflected and kept up to date across these platforms. So the component itself will remain up to date wherever you're using it. So we've had access to these for over a year now. In my experience, um, they haven't been often used. I've been using them a little bit myself. I've been looking for that real-time collaboration that I've been promised, but I've been met with a lot of confusion and usually people do just send me a follow-up chat message to you know, add their notes there rather than actually editing within it. So I'm really excited for this to be more widely adopted so that more people can start using them. So we now have workspaces pages as well. Loop finally has a home for its components. So it's time for us to start getting in the loop. So why would you use these? Well, you can use them to create lists, checklists, paragraphs if you need to edit some copy together. You can use tables, which can then be edited to serve many functions. Or instead of editing it yourself, you can use things like templates. And there's a few templates in there already that include voting tables, progress trackers, and different task lists as well. These are best when used within a small to medium team, especially a highly collaborative one. It's fantastic if there's a spread in work hours or locations because it can aid in asynchronous work with comment and reaction features built in as well. So you can add a comment, say what you've changed, and then everyone else can come and read that as well. So these are at their best when using for simple administrative and planning tasks. If you wanna write a whole report or crunch hard data, definitely use Word or Excel for that. But for things like recording notes and actions from a meeting, creating a interactive voting table on a concept or getting everyone to quickly update their availability in a table, Loop is where it's at. So let's have a little look at some of those components that you will likely use. The first one is meeting notes. And this is a really handy feature and it's just appeared in my Teams preview. So hopefully it'll be rolling out for everyone very soon. But soon while you're booking a meeting, you're going to see an option down the bottom of your new meeting screen to add an agenda that other people can edit. So clicking that is going to create a loop component for you. It's a meeting agenda component and it will be complete with a checklist for you to check off parts of your agenda that you've actually gone through. You're gonna have dot points to add notes to your meeting as you go. And you'll be able to add things like follow-up tasks down the bottom so that you can keep track of who's you know, actually agreed to do whatever <laughs> and things like that throughout the meeting. Now these components will sit within the meeting organizers OneDrive in a new meetings folder that will be created to go with it, kind of similar to how your Teams chat things will all be stored within your Microsoft Teams chat files folder in OneDrive. In a meeting, you'll see a notes tab that'll look a bit like that, and you'll be able to click on it to bring up your meeting notes down the side where everyone can collaborate and edit those together. So you won't just have one person tasked with taking all the notes and then having to go off that. You can all add to it as you go. And as you start to fill it out, it might look a bit more like this, which includes the task list down the bottom. You can assign people to them using a little at mention thing. It'll give it a due date and it will hold everyone accountable. And then you can go and access these notes later on, either from the Loop app or OneDrive or from the meeting itself. You can check that information, check off the tasks, now these task assignments are fantastic because they will actually hold you accountable because they integrate with planner and to-do. That was a fun thing. Um, as well as task by planner and to-do. So it's gonna appear in your Teams app, task by planner and to-do. It'll also pop up in the planner app if you're using that separately or in your to-do app if that's using, being used as well. You'll be able to find that particular task in both of those areas and actually hold yourself accountable, make sure you follow it up. So that was task assignments. <laughs> okay, so one other thing we're gonna have is voting tables. This component will actually give you a standard four column table for you to share and vote on ideas. You can discuss the pros and cons of those ideas and vote on them. You can actually click on the, or hover over the votes rather to see how people have voted. So you can get an idea of who likes what and speak to them say, you know, like, what is it about that idea that really grabbed you? Is there anything else we can do to incorporate ideas from other ideas? 
Now you can easily edit these. You can remove columns to simplify it. You can add extra information in as well. So if you wanted to say, you know, project owner or idea owner or something, it's as simple as finding a plus and adding in a new column and you can change types of columns easily. Let's have a little look at another application of those tables. So you can use regular table and turn that into a voting table if you wanted. You can also use one of the templates to create a progress tracker. Progress trackers will allow you to add tags like completed, in progress, not started or behind, and using different types of columns like people, tags, dates, as well as text formatting to create a checklist within that table. You can have an interactive progress tracker that can be moved from your check-in meeting notes to your whiteboard where you're all collaborating on it and making sure you're up to speed into your shared workspace for the project. So Loop is a highly adaptable different um, and has lots of different applications for you to use it. So that's a really brief introduction to the Loop. It's time for you to all get in the Loop. So you can actually click where it says get in the loop there. That'll take you to the loop.microsoft.com site where you'll be able to set it up for yourself. Um, try it with your work account. If it hasn't been enabled in your tenant yet though, try it with your personal email. You can still share things with yourself over Teams and things like that. Um, once again, click that title if you wanna get access to it. If anyone has any questions, feel free to shout them at me now or you can save them for the end. Thanks, Georgia, good job. If there aren't any other questions, I'm just going to move straight into what's new in Microsoft and in uh, the modern works field. Like I said, we've got a little bit of a Teams heavy user focus this month, which is a good thing. Like I've said in previous months that we've had more of a Teams heavy uh, update round. It's good to see Microsoft investing continuously in these updates and these improvements in Teams, especially with the advent of Teams 2.0 and that becoming uh, a more feature rich and more feature parity um, update. It's, it's good to see that the, uh, the, the feedback everyone puts through on user voice forums is actually being heard and being worked on and developed and rolled out. So, um, you know, kudos to Microsoft for continuing to develop a piece of software and making it better and I guess more user friendly and uh, you know, more feature rich for the end user. So, uh, first one, that is a really exciting one, is an active speaker view. So, this is an update that's currently available in public preview. Um, so this automatically tracks who's speaking. So speaker view for a Teams meeting allows you to seamlessly, effortlessly, automatically track the current active speaker. So the active speaker's video will be focused on and rendered at a higher resolution. So it does give you that better visual clarity um, and a more consistent placement of uh, individual video tiles across the screen, whether it's the row up the top or on the side. So what will happen is as people are speaking, if someone else was to jump in and speak after me, I wouldn't need to manually switch that camera view over and spotlight them. It will do it automatically. Um, so if you toggle the video on or off, it won't cause the entire a video stage to uh, sort of revisualize and re-render and redo its thing. The main area, so the bigger the, the bigger video screen that we see is what becomes that active feed, if that makes sense. So just by me switching to Justin as the active speaker, that won't necessarily spotlight him and put him in a higher resolution. It'll only do that when Justin starts speaking. This is going to be a really good tool for sort of a bigger audience forum, so like a, a, a town hall style or a webinar style presentation like this one. Like I said, that's currently in public preview. Um, it's accessible from the view button up the top. When that rolls out, you'll be able to select speaker view um, and that will automatically do that switching for you from there. Uh, the next one that's an interesting one is the live transcript profanity filter. So you can actually control whether to filter profanities in or out of your live transcript and your recorded transcript. You can toggle that on and off through team settings from an individual user base. It can be controlled from that higher level admin, but individual users can switch that on or off. Um, I'm fairly certain that I'm going to find that handy at some point. I'm just going to be really honest there. So if you go into your team settings uh, under the more icon language and speech, there's the option for turn on live captions and then filter profane words in meeting captions. It's a simple switch on or off. 
The next exciting one is the new the new meeting recap. So we've talked previously about the meeting recap feature under Teams Premium. So this is a Teams Premium feature only. Uh, there is a bit of a revamp to this. The um, It's now sitting under a recap tab. So previously it was sitting under meeting details. Uh, and yeah, not necessarily that, um, I guess, efficient uh, or self-explanatory for end users. Now it's quite simply labeled recap. So under that tab, you'll be able to watch that timeline recording that we've spoken of, um, all of the collaborative notes and actions that have been taken, as well as any loop components that have been plugged in. And the entire recap is now under that one tab. Everything sits in that one area, so it becomes your one-stop shop. And as you can see from the screen grab there, there's also the button up the top there to open in stream. So you don't necessarily have to go digging for where that recording is and to open it separately. You can open directly from the recap tab. That's currently in public preview and we'll hopefully see that as general availability, uh, ideally by mid to late July. The new channel experience is currently rolling out um, for Teams 2.0 and will hopefully flow into Teams 1. Uh, this is pretty cool, actually. Um, the Compose box, you can see I've highlighted that there in the square. Your Compose new message box in a channel now sits up the top rather than that speech bar down the bottom. So it feels a little bit more intuitive. Now, um, I had a laugh at this one because, oh, it feels very Facebook, but that kind of makes sense, right? All of these sort of social media tools, um, they're so second nature to us and the way they're laid out and the way they look and feel has become such a natural part of the way we communicate and interact that it makes perfect sense to flow on and continue that sort of behaviour. So having that, um, that compose box sitting at the top of the window, I think, makes it feel a lot more natural. You've also got on the sidebar there that I've highlighted a section called In This Channel. Think of this like a sort of grouping for all the information that lives in this channel. It could be pinned posts, it could be files, it could be your app mentions. It's a really simplified sort of summary of what's in that channel available to you right there, commonly accessed files, things like that. Uh, really handy to be able to just look over to the side of your screen and see what's really useful in the channel. There's also an updated badging feature that's come through. So your notifications and you know the, the, the badging around um, app mentions for you and uh, how many missed messages, things like that. So that's become a lot more, um, I guess, simplified really. It's all about making it easier for you as a user to understand if there's any new unread activity in that channel or any app mentions. So app mentions will take priority over just another one or two um, new messages, and it'll help you focus within multiple channels on what's relevant for you, what's not necessarily relevant for you. So again, that's currently rolling out in Teams 2.0, and we'll look forward to that being general availability really soon. The next one there, this is an exciting one. I really, really, really like this. This might be my favorite feature for the month is your ability to set your work location. There's been so much talk of over the last three years about remote work, flexible work, hybrid work. So to be able to see this plugged directly in to 365, where you can set office remote, making it really obvious for everyone where you're working is really important. So this is available um, mid to late June in Outlook for Web, so you'll be able to access this through Outlook on the web and on Teams. So it's a simple drop down box there next to your presence indicator that you'll be able to select your location. The default options are office and remote, or you can clear that. Uh, and that flows on into other applications as well. So if you set that in Teams, that'll flow into Outlook. So it'll set your notifications in there and any sort of pop-up cards that show up in 365, it'll be reflected through that as well. All about giving colleagues and uh, you know, all of our sort of work peers just that little bit more information to help us work together a little bit more seamlessly. Flowing directly from that, so I guess a sort of really organic sort of next step for that is your ability to control your work hours and your location in a little bit more detail. One of the things that uh, we do internally a lot is that we've got a dedicated channel um, at ICOM that talks about who's working remote and who's at a customer, who's interstate, whatever it might be. 
That problem is essentially being solved now by being able to set that through Outlook on the web, through your calendar. So what you'll be able to do is set your work hours and location in Outlook. And you can see it in that, in that moving image there. You'll be able to specify as a user, whether you're remote or in the office on individual days. And again, like we just said with the Teams, uh, set your location manually on the go, that flows into the rest of 365. So I set my work, uh, my sorry, my work from the office days as Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I set that as a permanent roster essentially, and that continues to flow into all of my office apps and communicate that to my colleagues um, and any external parties that I choose to have that sort of federation with. So that's really exciting to be able to set your location and control your hours. You can see right there, uh, we've got those drop down boxes for each day of the week. Nice and simple user interface, right? It's really easy to understand. Uh, and that is currently rolling out in phases. So some users may see that available to them in Outlook on the web at the moment. If you haven't, give it a couple of weeks and it should roll through. Um, and when you get it, let me know how that goes because I'm really excited about seeing this. I think this is going to make a really big difference to how we communicate and collaborate with each other, right? No more questions over, oh, is Dan in the office? Is Dan in the office? Where's he gone? You'll be able to see that easier. Uh, moving into the coming soon, we've got to talk about Viva at some point, and this is one of the big ones, the Yammer rebrand. The complete rebrand is finally happening. All Yammer platforms will be rebranded to Viva Engage. Uh, I'm told that that rollout will be by late July, um, but I'm sure Sneha can give me the thumbs up or thumbs down or the I don't know sort of emoji on whether that will actually happen. Um, and this encompasses all Yammer platforms. So anything on the web, any apps, any mobile apps, all of that will um, update to, uh, to Viva Engage. Now, this is really important to get across. Um, is anyone here a Yammer user? Give me a virtual hands up, please. Any Yammer users currently, Yammer, not Viva Engage, Yammer users, Anyone that currently uses Yammer in their organization, you want to get across this and you're going to want to get across this pretty well because the user experience and the user interface will change and it will for some people be a little bit unfamiliar, but also use this as an opportunity for some retraining or some recommunicating why you're using Yammer slash Beaver Engage. Really use this as a, a, a perfect platform to jump off that internal communications and collaboration and how you can get more on board with that and how your company can uh, utilize Viva Engage more efficiently internally. Uh, thank you, Sneha, for pointing that out in the chat. Yes, except any external networks, they won't be covered by this. So any internal, yes, will be rebranded. Um, yeah, definitely use this as a great jumping off point. If you're not a Yammer user, think of this as your sign from the universe to get on board with Viva Engage um, and how much more it can engage your team. Hey, hey, no? Okay. All right, I'm just going to move right on. Um, Microsoft Fabric, this is a big one. Now, recently Microsoft unveiled Fabric. Uh, so this is an end-to-end -end unified analytics platform. So this brings together all of the data and analytics tools that your organization will need. So it takes things like um, your Azure Data Factory, any analytics, Power BI, into one single unified product, right? This is, again, all about simplifying into that single point. So we don't have 7,000 apps anymore. We're trying to just bring this all into one line. Now, I'll just be really honest here. This is all way above my intelligence level and there's way too many acronyms and the words power and BI appear way too often and it gives me a lot of anxiety. I'm trying to learn it because I can absolutely see the value here. If you are a power platform user, if you're a data enthusiast, if you love numbers and analytics, this is a really big change that you should 100% keep across. We'll be staying across it. I'm going to try and be more intelligent and learn more about how all of this works. But this is really key. This is really critical for data and analytics people to make sure they're across all of this, um, all of these updates and changes. Um, coming soon. I don't have a solid date on this one, 
but again, please keep across it. If uh, if this is part of how you work or your organisation works and uses analytics, absolutely, you need to stay across this one. Are there any questions? That's my feature update. I've tried to be quick and short and sharp and punchy about it. I only threw in one or two bad jokes. Fantastic. Enough of my rambling. I'm going to hand over to our special guest. So, uh, again, virtual round of applause, real round of applause, throw your hands in the air, all of that. Please welcome Sneha. I'm going to let you introduce yourself here, Sneha, again. Um, you can do a way better job of introducing yourself than I can. So, over to you and I'll, uh, I'll hand over control of the screen as well. Thank you, Dan. So I'm Sneha Rao. Um, I have worked in Microsoft Consulting Services for, for about nine years after my 10 years at almost 10 years at Microsoft, eight and a half years of nine and a half years at Microsoft. I've got joined the Global Partner Solutions business in October of last year. I'm also the DNI lead for culture at Microsoft, uh, which is why you see my picture um, in a sari. And um, that's a picture taken when I hosted um, inclusive which was a culture session at for all of microsoft employees in october of last year um i am an indian classical dancer of indian origin um as well um so as a side hustle i can dance pretty well i've been on that i've been on national television in india as a dancer as well so um, that's just uh, a little bit about me outside of work. Um, at work, I'm a cloud solution architect for a partner business for employee experience or Viva. So anything Viva modern work related. So there's just me very quickly. Brilliant. Cool. Um, so what I wanted to take you through today in terms of Microsoft Viva was the current lay of the land in terms of what is as we see it as Microsoft sees it. Um, uh, the market dynamics uh, and what we see is the future of work and how does Viva as a platform um, help you? Now, a lot of people um, have heard of Viva. I describe Viva as a as an octopus growing tentacles because it has new modules that are released before I even find out that there's going to be a new module that's released. So we're just going to try and take it slowly, hopefully, um, and see how we go. So in terms of the, um, I mean, to kick it to to kick it off today, I wanted to just set the scene and highlight the reality and the opportunity we're seeing in the market from a modern work perspective, given the shifts we've seen in the way people now work and the flexibility they're demanding and acknowledging that the employee actually employees in general actually have a new worth it equation. And there really has been no better time uh, for us and this technology to be supporting our customers to deliver modern work solution. We all know hybrid work is very clearly here to say. We all know the day when Elon Musk said, if you don't clock in 40 hours a week, I will assume that you, in the office, I'll assume that you'll be resigning or you, I'll, I'll accept your resignation. Those sort of statements have gone into media and gone, uh, employees are better off looking for a job that suits their work and their life um, as opposed to just their work. Um, so um, as I said, the war, war for talent is on and we are absolutely operating in one of the hottest employment markets. We've seen there's so much talent that is available in the market and so many opportunities that employees won't hesitate to go from one job to another um, based on their personal situation. We all know flexible work has come at a cost of well-being. So we all know the time, at least when we started off the flexible work, there was uh, really no boundary between when work started and life happened. And we were all very flexible in terms of when we did meetings. I still remember doing meetings at my home at like eight o'clock in night because that was convenient. So we've so we've seen that it's actually led to quite a lot of stress and, and anxiety in a lot of em employees' um, 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 personal lives. And Viva as a platform or in general employee experience as a solution is really to address a lot of those elements and see how technology and skills can play a critical role in making flexible work a reality, but also not at the cost of well-being for all employees, as well as employers. Um, going to the worth it equation and just, just sharing some stats um, that has been collected over the last few years. This was actually uh, a report that was published in 2022, uh, September 22, 2022. 2022. Um, in terms of 
the new worth it equation. 83% of employees would be motivated to come into the office um, by the promise of socializing with coworkers. So they don't see any worth it. They don't see being able to work effectively uh, enough um, of a reason to come into the office. Um, so just to say to employees, we think you will work better if you're in the office is is we won't be accepted by by the employees. The whole element of socialization and giving that aspect of it is what what eighty three percent of the employees believe be a be a motivating factor. Seventy five percent of the employees and eighty percent of managers think the company does not solicit feedback often enough. And by that we mean, a lot of the feedback solicitation typically happens once every six months. And when you send a survey out once every six months to be filled out, it's typically a long survey, so it's not short and sharp, it's long. And also it captures the sentiment of the employee or employer at that point in time, not necessarily their experience throughout. So there is a lot to be said about sending short, sharp surveys. And in fact, Microsoft's adopted this now. We get sent surveys and a random selection of employees get sent surveys like on a monthly basis, rather than we used to have two surveys a year. Um, and it's called Pulse and um, Employee Pulse. And you'll see Pulse is a new module that's also come out again around the same concept of checking the pulse of your employees often enough as opposed to um, after a longer duration. Purpose. 81% of the employees say that it's important that their managers help them prioritize their workload, but also to understand that the work that they do is making a difference and contributes to the organization. Um, and having that purpose uh, really does help employees, a lot of employees get motivated to be more productive at work and growth. 76% of the employees say that they, they'd stay at a company longer if they received learning and development support. Now, I don't think any of this should come as a surprise to anybody, but if it does, this is real data that's coming from, that's been collected uh, less than a year ago. Now, um, navigating the employee experience is hard. So, and we say that because we know that companies actually have more than one tool to um, for employee experience. Some of us um, use Outlook for email, Teams for collaboration, uh, and some companies use WebEx for meetings. Um, so there, there's multiple different tools or modern work tools that are not connected in any way. Um, and, and line of business tools um, that are also not connected in any way, giving a very broken experience, employee experience to, to employees. And 60%, 68% of the employees find their current tools are outdated or irrelevant. I think even at Microsoft, and I'm not going to lie, this one of the things that's always comes out in our employee pulse is please fix our processes and our tools because our time sheeting tool doesn't really talk to our expenses tools, doesn't really talk to any of your other tools, and we're just forever in admin. So that that it's so Microsoft is, is not a stranger to this. And 94% of the business leaders actually want one comprehensive system. And that's mainly because they want to be able to report effectively on this one comprehensive system. They want to be able to get enough data to understand how their employees are feeling. But if each one of them, each, if, if, if the employees are using multiple different tools that don't talk to each other, that makes their job that much harder. Um, again, some information, um, employee experience does impact business success. It's not foreign to it, and I'm sure you all understand that. Um, the data um, that has been collected over the last few years is that only 15% of world employees um, worldwide, worldwide are engaged at work. Um, and, and this makes a difference when you look at the fact that highly engaged employees are 12 times less likely to leave, which means that companies spend less money trying to rehire, retrain uh, and attract talent um, if their employees don't leave. Um, and organizations with highly engaged employees have 23% greater profit profitability exactly for that reason. You also see highly engaged employees procrastinate less and therefore are highly more product uh, are, are more productive. So there is productivity efficiencies there as well. And moving to the employee experience platform and what do we actually mean? Um, I mean, to me, um, employee experience is far beyond just um, how I feel at work. It's about um, how do I collaborate and co-create with my fellow employees? 
what are the insights if I'm a leader at work um, or in the organization? What are the insights and well-being information I can capture for my employees? And how can we tweak our approach in order to increase um, well-being? Um, how do we provide a learning and development platform? How do we keep them engaged and um, allow for opportunities for growth um, and knowledge sharing? How do we democratize knowledge so that it's not so the culture in the organization is not such that the more I know, the more I can progress in the organization as opposed to the more I share as part of knowledge and is viewed uh, the, the more the organization moves ahead. What is the culture and how does the organization communicate? What is the communication strategy that brings the entire organization together as opposed to siloed? And are we all rowing in the same direction? What is the purpose and the alignment? Are each of the employees rowing the boat in the same direction so the organization together moves forward and so do the employees? So an employee experience platform ranges across all of these elements um, and at the center of it are people. How do they connect with each other and how do we actually, how do they engage with each other? Uh, now, there are a lot of different platforms that um, are used for employee experience, some disparate, some um, weave together. But today, being a Microsoft Day, I'll be talking to you about Microsoft Viva. And um, you'll see Microsoft Viva actually divided into four different pillars for exactly. Actually, there's a fifth pillar that I haven't included in this. The fifth pillar is sales. It's about Viva sales. And Viva sales is a Dynamics platform. It's based on the Dynamics platform, so we're not really going to be talking about it. But I'll talk to you about the other four platforms. Um, so um, talking to the four platforms, we have Viva Connection, uh, so Connections, and the, the Connection platform, which is weaved by Viva Connections at the top, and Viva Connections will and is the window to all other modules you will see across all of your other platforms. That's why it's right at the very top, um, and it says all apps in one place, but um, underneath connections, we see in the connection pillar, how do you engage with your leaders? How do you engage with different employees through different communities as part of Viva Engage? And how do you amplify any campaigns that you have as an organization through Viva Amplify? Viva Amplify will be released Q1 next FY. So looking at potentially either late August or late um, late September. Don't know exact dates as yet, um, but Viva Amplify is one of those, um, is part of the connections queue. Um, the next one we have is insights, which talks to how do you gain insights about the work patterns of your organize, of your employees through the emails, calendar meetings, um, the usage of Outlook, um, and how do you make them actionable so that they can actually do something about it? How do you encourage your employees to take some focus time so they can actually be productive? How do you encourage as an organization, as a team, as a leader, to make no meeting day for meetings day, for example, so organizations or teams can focus on productivity? Um, how do you use we gather frequent and often feedback through Viva Pulse? Purpose is, um, again, the fav my favorite pillar, I would say, is how do you create that, that, that purpose? And, and that doesn't have to be at an organization level. It would, I mean, we do encourage at an organization level and a leadership level, you do create a, an overarching purpose and goal. But it can even be as small as a business unit on a team level. So you all know that your teams and business unit is actually going in the same direction that then aligns to the organizational goal and growth, which is Viva Topics and Viva Learning. Um, so Viva Topics and Viva Learning for me is democratizing knowledge. How do you create, uh, how do you identify subject matter expertise, uh, experts in your organization? And then um, take them to, um, uh, and, and connect them with other people within the organization so that you can have knowledge available to all freely. Um, as opposed to um, what we previously said was that, you know, the knowledge was quite siloed with different people. Yeah. So one of the ways that I look at applying Viva to our organization is through a employee life cycle. Um, because this is an employee experience um, um, application, I like to look at how Viva applies at different stages of an employee life cycle. This is actually a Gallup employee life cycle, essentially. Um, and I look at how do you start from attracting, ta attracting talent? And I mean that by not just attracting talent through 
um, externally, but also through internally. And I think Viva Engage can play a really important part in attracting talents internally through your internal uh, community, but also through an external community that you're engaging with around um, 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 around talent um, advertisement, um, as well as LinkedIn, um, you would, as, as you would know. Um, to then moving into a hiring talent, what is the hiring experience you want to we want to provide to um, to 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 future employees? The interview process that you have again, this shows various different um, Microsoft products that you could use through the process. So it also includes your power platforms, it includes Office, it also includes Viva Engage. Um, so I'll just focus on the Viva the Viva uh, applications you can use over here. Again, Viva Engage is a very good way to 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 create create that hiring experience, moving to onboarding experience. And this is in onboarding. Um, I would actually put in both Viva Engage and Viva Learning as part of this. Um, um, Viva Learning, you can actually create onboarding packages, training packages to help you uh, onboard. You can create onboarding uh, communities for new starters, for example. You can, through Viva Engage, you can actually even uh, try and create, uh, add new members to different, uh, and we do this, different employee resource groups through Teams, that they might have a Teams channel and a Teams site, but also Yammer networks or Engage networks for the employee resource groups as part of DNI into engage and this is where you will see people um, um, during during engage you will see um, Viva insights and Viva learning as well as Viva um, engage play a huge part um, I mean obviously there are other apps and into perform where you want Viva topics and Viva learning to become a big part of their ongoing development and performance, as well as Viva Insights to understand how they're actually performing. Uh, and you can you, you you can you can get really cool insights from Viva Insights around uh, how many large meetings did they attend? How would how many how many did they multi multitask during meetings? Uh, were there is there do they have a meeting heavy calendar? How much focus time do they have? Um, as a manager. Uh, it reminds me, do I have one on ones with my employees? Do I can I delegate some of my work to my employees based on multiple people being invited in from my from my team on a meeting for it? These are just some some examples that Viva Insights can use to drive performance, um, but also develop through Viva Learning and Viva Topics um, uh, and into uh, when I say deep part, um, you can. And the reason why I've got Viva engaged there is um, do you want to create an alumni community to make sure that you're actually connected with your alumnus uh, who have left and you have uh, networking events with them moving uh, moving forward? So you stay in touch with them. Should there ever be an opportunity to reattract the talent um, that, that that have left, um, et cetera? So, I mean, mapping your employee experience through an employee journey and life cycle that's relevant to your organization and reviewing as an organization, what do you do today? What do you want to, where are, where do you feel are the gaps and where do you want to improve moving forward? Um, and how an employee experience platform can help you with those gaps is, an, is a great place to start in terms of uh, your own reflections on uh, on the Viva, well, on an employee experience journey. Um, the next one I tend to kind of use quite a lot um, is um, looking at scenario-based um, approaches. Um, and this is these are just some standard scenarios that most organizations find um, relevant to them is, um, you know, how do we actually do corporate communications today? Do we have a corporate communications plan? Do we have an understanding of um, what tools to use, when, to whom, who our audience is and what type of communication is it? Is it one to many, one to one, one to few? Uh, a few to make, few to one, so on and so forth. So, what are, what is that flow of of um, of communication? And um, the reality is, the prerequisites to try and drive a good com corporate communication strategy is very low, but typically the impact that it has on your employee base is quite high. So, you're able to reach a lot more employees. And if you have a good, strong employee corporate communications, it actually drives adoption of multiple technologies. Some of them part of the Viva suite, um, such as Viva Amplify. And Viva Engage, for that matter. Idea generation. So, how do you promote innovation and co-creation? Not just collaboration, but co-creation in your organization. What tools do you use to do it now? 
What are the gaps do you find with those tools? How do you want to promote it further? And then plug in Viva in terms of how it could actually try and drive that idea generation uh, activity. Um, so Yammer is a really good tool for or Viva Engage is a really good tool to collect ideas um, through through communities. So I mean you, you can plug in different and. And the reason why a, a SAM scenario based approach actually works is because it kind of connects all of your applications that you use. So it doesn't limit itself to um, in corporate comms. Let's just talk about Viva. It, it, it corporate, in corporate comms, it'll look at, well, what's the relevance of Outlook? What's the relevance of webinar? How do you do a webinar? When do you do a webinar in all hands? Um, what's the relevance of teams in all of this? And then where does Viva engage and amplify and so on and so forth come in? So it kind of binds the entire ecosystem together. Um, and some of the other is flexible working, team collaboration. Um, and you can see how, how I've separated idea generation to team collaboration because um, idea generation is very different to team collaboration. How do you streamline meetings? How do you decide if multiple team members of yours are invited to a meeting? Which ones are actually relevant to in, who should really be leaving? Who should be attending? And can, as a manager, you excuse yourself and let me, you know, delegate it to somebody else? Um, we are on time. Um, but I'm happy to happy to keep. I'm, I've got another. I've got, I've got another me, uh, meeting that I can just tell them I'm I'm going to be five minutes late too. Um, but these are two ways that I think Viva can um, or your tools, including Viva, can be uh, leveraged quite effectively within an organisation. Very cool. Thank you so much, everybody, and thank you, Sneha, for that awesome presentation. Thank you, Georgia, as well, for taking us through the loop. Other than that, everyone, go and enjoy your Tuesday. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next month. Thank you so much, everyone.